everyone, I'm Lee Diffie and welcome to the 1998 Supercross Masters here at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. There's a great crowd on hand here and if you've never seen Supercross, well you're in for a real treat because it's one of the hottest extreme sports around at the moment. And someone who knows just how hot it is is Team Yamaha rider Danny Ham. Danny, thanks for joining us, but I guess I must say commiserations because you're out injured at the moment, but uh, perhaps we'll see you back later in the season. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be back for uh, hopefully Brisbane Indoor this next round to come up. But, uh, you know, while I'm out, I like to do a bit of commentary. Anything to get me out there and involved with the sport, it's a great sport to be involved with. Now, your Team Yamaha teammate, Greg Anderson, he's one of the hot favourites. Yeah, he's one of the hot favourites. He's had uh, a lot of win this, wins this year. So um, I guess you could class him as one of the favourites. But there's a lot of young guys. Chad Reed, he's coming through. He's only just turned 16 and uh, amazing style at the moment. He's going to be one of the hottest out there. For someone who hasn't seen Supercross before, what can we expect to see here tonight? Uh, basically, some insane air. Some of the guys get out there. There's about a 22 metre jump here tonight that the guys are going to get sick on. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of close racing because it's indoors, it's bar bang, it's exciting stuff. How hard is it to ride on the, in the confines of an entertainment centre floor? Well, it's not too bad. It's basically like a supercross. Of course, it is smaller. Um, you know, it's a lot closer, as I said. The adrenaline and everything's pumping because you've got such a big crowd right on seat. And, uh, you know, it's very physical too. The amount of bashing you do, the amount of training you have to do to actually ride 20 laps around this track, it's an awful lot. Well, there you have it, Danny Ham, just whetting our appetites on what we can expect to see here at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre tonight. It's the first indoor round in the 1998 Supercross Masters, and let's check out the points table. Team Yamaha's Craig Anderson has a comfortable seven-point lead over Kawasaki's Peter Melton and local rider for this round, Craig Carmichael, in third. Troy Doran placed fifth. He's tied with Andrew McFarlane. A big surprise, KTM's Lee Hogan with a lot of work to do back in seventh. Checking out the 125s, Craig Carmichael and Michael Byrne. They're tied for the lead on 15 points. Queensland's Scott Bishop in third. Kiwi Darrell Hurley well placed in the top five. Jonathan Porter in seventh. The Supercross Masters caters for all ages, from the training ground of 80cc machines right through to the premier 250cc class. The rocket-like weapons ridden by the stars of the Supercross Masters are all reasonably matched in the power and performance stakes, so therefore it's the riders who make the difference. The guns to look out for in this year's series are defending 250cc Supercross Masters champ Craig Anderson. The 20-year-old Team Yamaha rider has already wrapped up this year's Australian Supercross title and is well on target for another Masters crown. The only non-Japanese manufacturer in the field is the Austrian-built KTM. Their number one pilot is 1997 Aussie Supercross champ Lee Hogan. The key to indoor racing is good starts because there's so much luck involved and anyone that gets into the main event has got a, a legitimate shot at winning on the night. Regular visitor to Australia and definite crowd favourite is American Mike Jones. The former world champ has all the speed and racecraft to mix it with anyone, yet can also be the clown and entertain the masses. Former Supercross champ Peter Melton is one of the most experienced riders in the field. As Kawasaki's number one, he thrives under the tight indoor conditions and is known as Mr Consistency. Young gun Chad Reed at just 16 is already creating shockwaves through the Australian Supercross scene. Paired with teammate Cameron Taylor, the two could spring a few surprises throughout the 98 series. And the rider known as Kamikaze, Honda's Kim Ashkenazi. Another former Supercross Masters winner, the Sydney Sider was based in America throughout 1996. Now back in Australia, Ashkenazi is keen to win. Supercross Masters is all about coming to terms with the conditions very early in the night, and that's what the heats provide you with, an opportunity to do that. And the visiting American Mike Jones on board his Suzuki did it very well. He was undefeated in the heats, 
taking an easy road right through to the semi-finals. It's his ninth year here to Australia, the man known as Dynamite, and that's exactly what he is. Cameron Taylor, the first of the two Team Suzuki riders, out having a great start tonight, going through to the semi-finals by winning his heats very comfortably. His first ride in the Supercross Masters as a senior rider, the 16-year-old Chad Reed, certainly isn't afraid of the older riders, and he progressed to the semis quite easily. Heats are one thing, but how will he go later on in the all-important semi-final? Craig Anderson aboard the Team CDR Yamaha, off to a great start this year. He's already clenched the Australian Supercross title earlier on in the year at Mildura, and out into the lead and having a great night. Well, it was a relief for Anderson to go through to the semi-finals. A lot of the riders say that he's the guy to beat. We'll have to wait and see. Perhaps it could be Kawasaki's Peter Melton. He really thrives on the indoor circuits, and especially here in Adelaide, which has been a happy hunting ground for him in the past. He's enjoying the conditions tonight in front of this 9,000-strong crowd, the capacity crowd here. Melton was really doing it well early in the night. He was challenged by Andrew McFarlane, but it wasn't enough. Let's hear from Mike Jones, the American. You know, Mike Jones is in Australia to put on a show. And then second, I guess I want to win for uh, Suzuki Australia, but SMP's helping me out as well, and I'm just happy to be here. This extreme sport is not only just about extreme racing, but it's about expressing yourself. And that's exactly what the riders get to do in the No Fear Expression Session. Here's Troy Carroll. Now, he comes up and does what's called a heel clicker. These riders are uh, attempting to jump. Well, the big jump is 25 metres in length. They can go as high as 15 to 20 metres in the air. The longer you're in the air, well, the more stunts you can do. As Carroll gets up the ramp there, you notice that he does a little bit of a jump to try and get the height clicking his heels across in front of his face, and that's where the term heel clicker comes in. The crowd just love it. They're going bananas here at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. This is their local rider, Shane Metcalf. Oh, a heavy landing. What went wrong? Well, basically, he's just come up to it a little bit too much speed and not judged it right, coming down way too hard on the last jump that he wasn't actually trying to plan to land on. Wow, this is a lot of fun for these riders. Time for them to have a little fun, I guess, but I don't think this was too much fun for Metcalf. Look at the landing. Absolutely, he judged it all wrong. He's no footy can-can. Didn't quite pull off as much as he liked and landing very, very hard indeed. Well, he certainly got his feet back over the seat in time, but uh, didn't quite land well enough. Now, here's Sydney's Ben Jones, someone who really enjoys these expression sessions, and he got massive height on that jump. Yeah, he's probably the only 125 that was actually, he was the only 125 to jump that jump all night long. It's a big jump, expect 250s to do it. And there you go, he's doing these huge jumps, yet he can't even get through a little easy set of stutters. He goes down, breaking the lever. The great thing about the No Fear Expression session is it has no relevance in terms of the riders' points on the night. They have fun, and just look at how high Jones gets here. It doesn't really show how high he is, you know, you need a big side shot to show it. That's called a shin scraper. The shins scrape across the handlebars, he leans back, and as you can see in the background, he is well up there. Well, he's pretty happy with himself, I don't know about after falling off. No relation though, this is the American Jones, Dynamite Jones. There he goes, over the triple, it's the other side of the track this time. These riders like to do a couple of things, it's called the stalk, he gets his head way down underneath the mudguard, almost touching the front toe with his peak. Goes around for a second time, over the big jump, this is the main jump, Throws it sideways for a classic cross-up. Not good enough, though. Unable to take the win on the night, and Ben Jones is the winner. Well, Ben, another uh, expression session win. You just keep reeling them out. Yeah, you know, I love coming out here. This kind of stuff, it really gets the crowd going. And, uh, you know, just watching everybody go off kind of gets me going a well, so. I mean, how high are you going? You don't ever get scared? No, not really, no. I've got a practice track with jumps. You know, a lot bigger than this, so I come out here, this stuff's pretty easy, really. Do you enjoy this more than the racing? Well, I always win those, I don't seem to win many races, so yeah, I'll, I'll have to go to the expression session. Three. Time to get serious, it's semi-final number one for the 250s in the American, Mike Jones on Bike J, he gets the whole shot. On the inside, Craig Anderson caught in the middle, and it looked like Matt McKenna was in there as well. Yeah, he definitely is he's going for an inside move. Anderson, though, has been pushed back a couple of places by, I think it was Craig Carmichael, just squeezed up the inside. 
Forcing his way through on the inside there was Paul Grant, but it's Matt McKenna on 10. He holds nice and firm, but it's the American, the former world champ, Mike Jones, who leads the way. He's done this all night long. Out to a great start is so important to get a good start in these races because the racing is so tight. You make a bad start, you make it very, very hard indeed for yourself to make it through. And Danny, he's one of just two riders that's clearing that big jump over the tabletop as well. Cameron Taylor, also on a Suzuki, sitting pretty in second spot. Suzuki is sitting one, two, three at the moment. Very, very comfortably indeed. Taylor having a great night, doing well on the one, two, five and the 250. Well, someone who's in a bit of trouble at the moment is Yamaha's Craig Anderson back in fifth spot and well off qualifying. There he is just going over the tabletop at the moment. You must be in the top three to go through to the main event. Absolutely. Getting anywhere behind that makes it so hard and also puts so much nerves in, inside of you. You know, if you don't get through, you've got the pressure of the last chance qualifying. If you don't get through on that, then your night's over. Well, it's Mike Jones, the American. He goes through to the main event. So too Cameron Taylor. Now there's a challenge on here. Look at it. Craig Anderson. He gets there. He qualifies for the main event. Semi number two comes out and it's McFarlane, another Suzuki rider, out to a great start. Melton on bike 70. He's up the inside. And then it's Chad Reed, the young 16-year-old. Well, we said it earlier, Peter Melton, known as Mr. Consistency. He's sitting in the top three. That's the important spot to be in on the Kawasaki. Chad Reed, the 16-year-old, forcing the issue on the inside. Couldn't quite do it through the stutters that time, though. Yes, indeed. Melton is one of the smartest riders out there. Had a lot of years of experience. Chad Reed, though, looking up the inside, not quite close enough to make the pass stick. Andrew McFarlane on bike four who leads the way. He's had a dreadful year. He spent a lot of time on the sidelines. Sir Inji, have a look at that. What a move. McFarlane went wide. Melton the inside and so too Chad Reed. That's one of the smartest things that Melton does. You'll find he does that a lot. He went to the inside. Chad Reed to the outside. Took McFarlane wide. McFarlane having a shocking time right now. He's lost another place. Couldn't quite get that tricky little jump right. And he's now lost maybe two or three positions at least. So it's Peter Melton on board the number seven Kawasaki who leads the way from this young guy, Chad Reed on bike 20 sitting in second now so if he stays there he's through to the main event yes bad luck there for McFarlane one slight mistake and you're out of it it doesn't take much at all tight and tough conditions here at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre but it's Kawasaki's Peter Melton who's handling them the best he's powering his way through the last couple of turns now up towards the tabletop and it's going to be Peter Melton that takes semi number two Chad Reed in second then Michael Byrne in third with six positions already decided from the semis Andrew McFarlane joins them in the main event but this is desperation stakes the last race these riders have any chance to get into that final Troy Doran came out quite hard from the outset muscled Kim Ashkenazi out of the way and that proved to be the definitive move for the Kawasaki rider. He went through to the 250 final. As for the 125s, this is how they line up in their main event. Paul Grant, Daryl Hurley, Michael Byrne, Ben Jones, Chris Grant, Cameron Taylor, Craig Carmichael, Chad Reed. They are the eight top riders in the 125s, and this is it. Away we go. Hurley, the Yamaha rider, gets off to a great start. A slight bump in the first corner as Ben Jones goes down. The young Kiwi on board bike H, Daryl Hurley, who leads the pack. This is fantastic for him because he hasn't had such a great night. He hasn't really featured, and here he is leading the main event. Taylor in second. Now the local rider, Craig Carmichael, he's moved himself up into third place, challenges up the inside, unable to make the move step. How about it for Cameron Taylor? He's qualified for the two finals, this, the 125 and the 250. And at the moment, sitting in second. Now he's in the lead. A great inside pass there from Cameron Taylor, now in the number one spot. Carmichael tries to take advantage of these two riders, only doubling these things up in towards the stutters. He's got through too on the inside, through the stutter bumps. Carmichael now is in the number two spot. Hurley trying to fight back. Reed also looks up the inside of Hurley. Hurley's got a lot of pressure put on him right now. How about this, Danny? This is fantastic for Cameron Taylor. We haven't seen him really have a fantastic year, but he's doing it here tonight in Adelaide, and he's got quite a commanding lead over the series points leader. It doesn't look like a huge lead, but on an indoor so tight and so small, that is quite an advantage. Across the top of the start is doing it very easily indeed. It's Cameron Taylor coming up and over the Triple M triples. A little bit of air time there. Throws it sideways. It looks like he's very comfortable. Got a slight lead and takes the win. Great ride there for Cameron Taylor. Just the start of a great night. Did it easy in the end. Did it quite comfortably over Craig Carmichael. Let's have a look at those final positions. It was Taylor in for the win from Craig Carmichael. Chad Reed, Paul Grant in for fourth. Hurley ended up finishing in the fifth. Byrne, Jones and Grant.
chances there. Virtually out of it. A long way to come back, but we've got a long way to go. And on the inside, Cameron Taylor, the big move on American Mike Jones. Now Jones comes back. Well, this is great stuff on the opening lap. A long way to go, and Jones and Taylor forcing the issue early. Absolutely. Very, very physical indeed. These guys want to have any psychological advantage they can by moving any other riders out the road. Defending champ Craig Anderson sitting nicely back there in third. But how about Mike Jones? He is undefeated tonight. A clean sweep in the heats and in his semi-final. He is the big rider tonight. These three riders now starting to clear out. It's only early in the race, but they've got themselves about a three-second lead already. These guys are definitely the hot riders. All right, it's a long final, Danny. What are you going to do psychologically? Is it good to be out in front or you prefer to chase? Well, at the moment, Taylor's in a very good position. He's very close to Mike Jones. Jones is the one that always has to be thinking about where Taylor is. As you saw earlier, the riders come up the inside. If you're not covering the inside, then they could squeeze through, but at the same time, the inside could be a little slower. It's very difficult to leave. Speaking of the inside, we got some good shots there of bike number six. That's Craig Anderson on the Yamaha. Have a look at this side by side up over the tabletop. Taylor trying to get on the inside of Mike Jones, but couldn't do it. There you go, inside again. Keep your eye on Anderson here. He's making move. Almost hits the back wheel of Taylor. As I said, the inside is a big thing. At the same time, the outside, it's just very difficult to try and think about where you're going to go. Anderson got caught up there on that little tricky corner jump on the uh, the way into the triples. That's lost him some time, but Taylor hasn't lost any time. Again, on the same position of the track, tries that inside run on Jones. It doesn't come off. It's only that little bit of extra speed that Jones is carrying over the jumps that keeps him that little bit of a lead. If they're only doing the tabletop, Taylor would be through. It's the American, the Victorian and the New South Welshman, Anderson, on the inside of Cameron Taylor now. Always pressing on that inside line. He's unsuccessful as well. Jones still got that comfortable lead as he goes up over the big jump once again. Taylor's just thinking about, watching the lines, thinking about where he might be able to get under the inside or around the outside to get into the lead. Well, it was a two-way battle between Jones and Taylor. It's now a three-way battle because here's Anderson. He's into it as well. I can't believe how far back these other riders are at the moment. These three are really streaked out. Anderson right up beside Taylor as they go through the air, looking for the inside, landing short. Taylor covers his line. These guys are close. Taylor almost landing on a hay bale. I can't believe Anderson gets snuffed in through the corner as well. Well, you couldn't ask for a closer final. Mike Jones, he seems to be doing it a little more comfortable than the others. Oh, he's down! You our put, race leader is down! You put the mucker on. What have you done? Well, just as I said, our race leader was well in control. Mike Jones is down and he's not well at all. He's in a lot of pain. The race has been stopped. So, Craig Anderson, well, uh, the luck went his way. He shot straight through the lead. Let's have a look at a replay. Mike Jones coming through the stutters. Gets into trouble look, there. Look at the right hand. Couldn't find the bar. His hand fell off. He was looking and looking and looking to try and grab that bar, but unable to get it. Watch here as he gets into trouble. Right about there on the stutters. This is where he loses grip. And he's a passenger from there. He just gets thrown right off the bike. It's not a great feeling having your head drilled into the ground. Cameron Taylor got stuck on the outside, and as we were saying, that was Craig Anderson's fortune. Well, we're set for the restart. Minus American Mike Jones. Gates go down. Away we go. And it's Suzuki's Cameron Taylor that gets the whole shot. Chad Reed was a victim in the first time round. He's off to a better start, so it's going to be interesting to see how he goes from there. Well, Danny, how about uh, Peter Melton sitting in second spot? He and Reed were the guys who got tangled up in the original start. Now he's sitting inside the top three. Yeah, absolutely. A better start for these two. But it's Craig Anderson and McFarlane battling it out at the moment for third place. Cameron Taylor, he really has been consistent tonight. Well placed in the heats. Finished second in the semi behind Mike Jones. Now he leads the restart of the main event. Sitting in second spot, Peter Melton from Anderson. Then we go back to McFarlane. One of the major things that Taylor's done all night long is made no mistakes. As we saw earlier with McFarlane, to make a mistake, it's going to drop you back. He's been smooth and consistent all night long, and that's why he's up in the front. Keep an eye on bike six, the Yamaha rider Craig Anderson. He was starting to line up. Peter Melton there looking for an inside run. There's just one lap left to run. Can Cameron Taylor hang on? He's looking the goods at the moment. Quite a healthy lead there over Yamaha's. Looks like Yamaha's Craig Anderson in second. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And then it's back to Chad Reed and McFarlane battling it out over the last lap. But it's Taylor all the way. Pulls a hand off, showing his appreciation and how happy he actually is to get out there and win. Well, it's been a fantastic effort by the young Victorian. Up and over he comes, he takes out round three of the 1998 Supercross Masters in the 250. Anderson's happy, he knows he gets some big points in second spot in terms of his series. And Andrew McFarlane held on for third.
Checking the final placings for the 250s for you, Cameron. Taylor in for a great win from Anderson, McFarlane, Reed, Byrne, Doran and Melton. Well, it really was a great night for Cameron Taylor. Let's hear what he has to say. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't be happy with that. I mean, uh, I think the only other indoor I won, I rode two bikes that night too, so maybe there's something in there that, you know, I'm going to have to keep doing it, I think. You know, it's always important to get a good start, and I got a good start in the second restart. So, uh, you know, I was happy and, and just held lines and, and rode a smart race and, and a consistent race at that. I was feeling confident all the way through the first half of the race and I kind of lost a little bit of motivation when it went into the restart and I just thought, it, you know, second was OK. I you know, salvaged seven points and first place was only only eight points. So I got a, nearly a full, or more than a full round clearance of uh, points. So, you know, I can't, can't believe it. I'm pretty happy. So with the Brisbane round just two weeks away, this is how the series sits. Craig Anderson comfortably in front ahead of Cameron Taylor and Andrew McFarlane. The local boy in Brisbane, Peter Melton, sits fourth. Troy Doran, Craig Carmichael and Chad Reed and Lee Hogan tied for that seventh spot. In the 1-2-5s, it was tied before this round. Now Carmichael has a comfortable lead over Byrne. The Kiwi Hurley in third ahead of Jones, Bishop, Taylor, Reed and Grant. As we said, the series now moves to Queensland. It's Brisbane Entertainment Centre on July 25, followed by the Victorian round at Melbourne Park on August 8, and a double header in Sydney on September 11 and 12. And you can reserve your tickets through Ticketek. We hope you enjoyed the first round. On behalf of Danny Ham, I'm Lee Diffie. See you in Brisbane.